Ooh, hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is day four of the August Eco Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this farm. Uh, I had a busy day. Um, I did one six miles, so that was great. Um, and this is the beginning of the tough part of the marathon training where I am doing 40 miles a week. So, uh, and some of it hard. So, not just easy miles. So, it's going to be. A, yeah, fun. Um, I'm trying to Google what, uh, 65 kilometers in case you are wondering. Yeah, uh, but that's tomorrow's Larry's problem. Today, let's figure out today's problem of 904 fruit into baskets. All right, you're missing a farm, single world of fruits, left to right. Trees are represented by an integer array fruits. Fruits are biased to type of fruit that the ive tree produces, okay? You want to collect as many fruit as possible, but um, the owner has some strict rules that you must follow. You have two baskets. Each basket can only hold a, hold a single type of fruit. There's no limit of the amount of fruit you can hold. All right. Some of any trainer, you must pick exactly one fruit from every tree while moving to the right. Picked fruit must fit in one of your baskets. Okay. I mean, maybe. But it's a little confusing, but okay. Uh, once you reach the tree of a fruit that can... Um, reach a tree of a fruit that cannot fit into your basket, you must stop. Okay. I still don't have no idea. Okay, so fruit sub I is the type, right? So here you can go one, two, one, and then you have you still have okay. Oh, you can start from any tree. Okay, so that's the part that I I was like very confused about. Like if you start from the beginning, do you just count and then I don't know. But since you could begin at any point, I guess that's a little bit more interesting, right? Okay. Um <coughs> How do I want to think about this? I mean, first of all, n is 10 to the fifth, right? I didn't notice that. And of course, that just means that uh, you cannot do anything n squared. If you could do n squared, there is n squared substring. So that would have been trivial, right? Um, the way that I want to think about it is just try to figure out how to... Um... Yeah, I mean, with two fruits... I mean, it it feels very sliding windowy, right? I think that may be the thing, right? Because then now, when you have two, you just keep going, and then when you have a third, you just kind of reduce it to two, and that's it, right? I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, um, uh, here we have, you know, a, uh, how I usually set up sliding window. Um, I I set it up as. Um, <clears throat> Exclusive at the beginning of the loop, but then here we make it inclusive by adding uh, fruit sub right, right, and so forth. So here maybe we just have like f dot uh, collections dot count or something like this, right? Uh, and we also just keep track of best is equal to zero for whatever reason. And then now we add fruits, right? So f of fruit sub right we increment by one, right? And then now we just if uh, now left and right are inclusive, but then and we want to keep it that way, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's right. But we want to check that if left of f is greater than two, then we have to shrink, right? Uh, we shrink by taking left. Um, so we, we move left from the thing. So f of fruit sub left subtract one, um, and of course. The way that uh, Python does it, if you just do length of f is, oh sorry, if f of foot sub left is zero, then we can just delete it, and and deleting it um, allows this length to uh, go under two, right? Because otherwise it has the key. So f length of f just counts the number of keys. Um, but if you don't delete it, it actually has a key with a value of zero. But if you delete it explicitly, then now you have fewer keys. And you want the number of keys to be two. And that's how you do it. And then now at the end, uh, left, uh, left, right, is, we still maintain the invariant that left, right is um, uh, inclusive, right? Inclusive bounds, where we have at most two distinct fruits, right? So then now we can just do a max of best, uh, right minus left plus one, which is the inclusive bounds, and then we just return it, right? The best over all of these sliding windows. 
It was okay. I, hopefully I didn't miss something silly. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this one, I don't know, I'm a little bit slow, but that's fine. A little bit lazy. I mean, maybe you could be a little bit smarter. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is a very standard sliding window E thing. Um, the key observation about sliding window is just try to figure out these invariants uh, along the way and whether the logo optimal thing for the sliding window is true globally, right? Or globally as in like you don't have to go back on the left, right? Because the key thing about this analysis is that this is O of N and of, of course O of right is O of N, um, but left also goes up only N times. So it's going to be O of N plus N, which is O of 2N. Uh, and that's it, right? And uh, this, in terms of space, this is just O of 1 uh, because F can only contain at most, I guess, three items at, at most. And after that, you just delete one anyway. So, yeah. So pretty straightforward. And I guess you don't even need an F table or F table, a frequency table if you really wanted to, like, just maintain two numbers. But, um, yeah, but that's it. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to keep it early. Uh, uh, a short video early evening and going to go to bed. Stay good, stay healthy to go mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye bye.